humans have always been explorers. From the first time our ancient ancestors walked out of Africa to the voyages across oceans and to the moon, we just can't help ourselves. If there are things out there to explore, you know we're going to get there. But you see, exploring space is a lot harder than just shoving off from the shore. It takes way more than just building boats, it takes a lot of thinking. Yet we've been able to travel through space for decades now. Even then, we're still at the very first stages of what the potential for space travel really is. But we might just be on the cusp of making it all a reality. NASA just announced they're working on a new creation. One that will change space travel forever. Join us as we dig deeper into NASA's new creation and how it's going to solve all of the hurdles of space travel. But before we get any further, please hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our next uploaded video. Let's get back to the video. For a minute, let's talk about the space race, where it all began. The US and the USSR were going head to head, trying to outdo each other in space exploration. It was like a cosmic game of anything you can do, I can do better. And the US clearly won. By spending a ton of cash on the Apollo program, the US gained major bragging rights on the world stage. It was like a status symbol for the country. Yeah, we put a man on the moon, what have you done lately? But it wasn't just about political posturing. President Kennedy saw the Apollo program as a way to invest in advanced technology and create new opportunities for Americans. And boy, did it work. Over 400,000 Americans worked on the Apollo program at its peak. And let's not forget about the impact on our planet. The Apollo program may have been focused on the moon, but it had a ripple effect on Earth. During the Apollo years, we started to realize that our planet was precious and we needed to take care of it. Groups like Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace were established and we started to pay attention to things like pollution and climate change. The things that we're studying in depth today all started with that one flight that the majority of the world thought we didn't even need. Thanks to the Apollo missions, we got to witness some truly motivational images of our planet 384,000 kilometers away. One such image was the iconic Earthrise photo captured by the Apollo 8 crew in 1968. This photo really resonated with the public and gave us a new perspective on our planet as a vulnerable oasis of life in the vastness of space. Even though at this point we didn't have the abundance of information about our galaxy that we do now, it was still a glimpse that Earth might just be one of a kind. But it wasn't just the Earthrise photo that changed our perspective. The famous blue marble photo taken by Harrison Schmidt in 1972 was another powerful image that made us see our planet in a whole new light. As William Anders, the Apollo Lunar Module pilot, famously said, we came all this way to explore the moon, and the most important thing is that we discovered the Earth. Apollo's impact wasn't just technological. Culturally, the can-do attitude of NASA from the Apollo years is now respected worldwide. The human spaceflight adventure has become fascinating to young people thanks to movies like Apollo 13 and First Man, making real space travelers new role models. We now also understand lunar cratering and have clarified the cratering rates of Earth, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. We even discovered lunar mass cons, areas where the lunar mass is more concentrated beneath lunar basins, originating from impacts 3.2 to 3.6 billion years ago. That's actual ancient history. But it's not just what the astronauts brought back that taught us something new. It's also what they left behind, like laser reflectors that show the moon is slowly drifting away from Earth at a rate of about 4 centimeters per year. That was something we couldn't have possibly known before. And now, we're itching to go back to the moon. It's been a while since the last Apollo mission, but in the last couple of years, there's been a renewed interest across the world. Thanks to water ice discoveries at the lunar poles, NASA is currently developing the Lunar Orbital Platform Gateway Space Station with European, Japanese, and Canadian support. Landing missions may occur by the late 2020s, and former Vice President Mike Pence even called for a U.S. return to the moon as early as 2024. But let's be real here, it's going to take a bit longer than that. NASA thinks 2028 is a more realistic date, so in the next five years, we might just make a permanent home on the moon, too. So what's stopping humans from exploring space the same way we've explored the moon? A lot, actually. 
When it comes to space travel, the biggest obstacle is, you guessed it, gravity. If you want to get through gravity's hold, you need to be going at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour. Speeds that don't come easy. You see, going that fast isn't cheap. It cost almost $200 million just to launch the Mars Curiosity rover, and that's just a robot. Imagine the cost of sending actual human beings up there. One way to cut costs is by reducing the weight of the spacecraft. But this is just the first problem we're dealing with. There's a plethora of other issues too. One of the most basic ones is isolation. Being stuck in a small space with the same people for months or even years sounds like a nightmare to me. But for astronauts on a mission to explore space, it's just another day at the office. And well, that office is not exactly spacious. Even in space. On Earth, we're used to having everything we need at our fingertips. Need to order food? There's an app for that. Want to catch up with your friends? Just shoot them a text. But in space, it's a whole different story. The lack of connection with the outside world can lead to some serious behavioral issues, but that's not all. Sleep loss, work overload, and circadian desynchronization can compound the issue and lead to even more problems. That's why NASA is developing methods for monitoring behavioral health and working on adapting tools and technologies to help astronauts cope. Research is being conducted on everything from workload and performance to light therapy for circadian alignment. Because, let's face it, no one wants a sleep-deprived astronaut accidentally pushing the wrong button and sending the spacecraft into a black hole. There are just too many variables here, all of which just get worse and worse as time goes on. Add to that the fact that you're just stuck in a spacecraft the entire time and things start to feel a lot worse. Let's paint a picture here. Going to space is a bit like camping, but instead of being surrounded by trees and critters, you're surrounded by the cold, unforgiving vacuum of space. So if you're going to survive in this hostile environment, you're going to need a cozy and comfy spacecraft to call home. NASA knows that if astronauts are going to spend months or even years floating in the void of space, they're going to need a few things to make their living quarters bearable. They need to make sure everything is just right. Temperature, pressure, lighting, noise, and space all need to be just so. But living in a spacecraft is more than just finding the perfect living conditions. There's also the issue of keeping everything clean and healthy. All of these issues build on top of one another and make it extremely difficult for humans to make it close enough to the planets to gather quality information that would take things here on Earth to the next level. But NASA is here to potentially fix everything. They're developing a brand new engine called the helical engine that's supposed to defy the laws of physics entirely. The engine uses a groundbreaking technology known as a helicon plasma thruster, which allows it to accelerate ions to very high speeds, producing a powerful thrust that can be used to propel spacecraft through space. It operates by generating a magnetic field that ionizes gas, producing a plasma. The plasma is then accelerated through a magnetic nozzle creating thrust. What makes this engine so remarkable is that it is incredibly efficient, using only a fraction of the fuel that traditional chemical engines use. This means that spacecraft using this engine can travel further and faster than ever before, all while using significantly less fuel, solving one of the main problems with space travel right there. The reduced fuel consumption also means that spacecraft can carry more payload, which is crucial for space exploration and research. The development of this engine represents a major breakthrough in space technology. Its increased efficiency and reduced fuel consumption have the potential to change the way we explore and travel through space forever. If you had the opportunity to hop on a rocket with this engine on the way to Mars, would you? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this article, please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.